Ford weighed probably 75 pounds. It took two of us to get in the water. I got firsties and went out and paddled the board, turned it around, caught the last wave, was careful about it, stood up in the board and immediately fell off the back of it. I watched the board go right onto the beach, swam in, got the board, turned around, came back out. This time, I didn't make the mistake, rode the board standing up straight to the beach. That was my first experience in riding a surfboard. I got hooked. <laughs> Well, when Kevin and I were doing this board project, I got thinking that due to my age, I'm one of the few people that actually lived through this whole era of how surfing came to California, what we called the wood board era. And it occurred to me that we could portray these boards as they were actually built and used from the beginning when the Hawaiians brought them up to the changeover to the plastic surfboard. So I actually grew up in the surf in Laguna, and I learned how to body surf waves in Laguna Beach and the slam dump surf we have down there. I got interested, of course, in, in surfing because I was body surfing, but I never saw anybody ride a, a board, a surfboard. But I did see some boards that were leaning up against the, the tower and the lifeguard towers. A few years passed, and we heard about a place that was close to Dana Point called Salt Creek. And we went down there one day and I noticed that somebody's standing up on a surfboard and a couple of lifeguards who I actually knew at that time were out riding these boards. So that was my first introduction to stand up riding on surfboards. Eventually that led to trying to get one of those boards. It was difficult because there were very few out there. I got a hold of one of the guards and he said he was, he was actually going to make another one. And when he gets through with that, I'll sell you this one just for the price of getting the wood. So he did and I got a hold of the board and that got me launched into surfing early in Laguna Beach. That's about 1947. At that time, those boards were big. They're all 9, 6, 10 foot. They weighed, oh, 75, 80, 90 pounds, depending upon what they were made of. Most of them were made out of redwood. And there were very few people surfing in that time. Most of them made their own boards. Eventually, after riding, I believe it was Joe Quigg's boards, I got real interested in making my own. Shaping the first surfboard, I had to find the tools. I had to find somebody that had the tools and watch them to do it. It was a big job. So I put my first board together. Now the materials were pretty crude then. You had to sun cure the resin and on and on it went. So I rode the first board that I made doing it that way. We rode them in a style that wasn't created yet like it is today. Rode the waves more straight towards the beach, sideways on the waves, yes, but not that radical as it's being done today. It was a more uh, gentle way, you might say, of riding a wave. I heard about Hobie. Now, he was the only one making a surfboard for somebody else. He would make one or two a month. He sort of dropped out of school, and he started making more of them. He finally got to the point where it's a little too big for the garage. And Hobie started to make surfboards commercially. One day, I was surfing Salt Creek, and he paddled out right in front of me. He said, I need somebody to work. I'm really behind. At that time, he had a goal to make six boards a week, and that was difficult to do. I said, OK, I'll go down. And he showed me how to do what we call production line surfboard laminating. And I worked for him probably two years, maybe three. The bottom one is the Hobie. And this is Dana Point, 30s and 40s. That's actually the way it was. So the whole idea was to go and ride this place where the waves were, say, six foot plus in that area. It was a big job to 
carry those heavy surfboards all the way down that road. So when you're, you're committed yourself when you get down there to stay all day. Besides making surfboards, I was also involved in commercial fishing at the time. I was, at that time, I was commercial diving abalone. Around 1958, I was beginning to realize the future of Orange County was going to be something different real soon. I could see the track homes coming, the orange groves being torn down. I decided maybe it was time to move. I went up and took a look at Santa Barbara, mainly I looked at the fisheries up here and seen, and I was surprised at how much was going on up here compared to what I was doing down there. At that time, there was nobody making surfboards up here. There was probably, I think maybe eight or 10 kids that surfed in this town. And then during the summer months, I had time a little bit from fishing. I said, well, I could actually supplement my income by making surfboards. So I opened up a little store in Anacapa Street. I shaped the boards. And another guy that I knew real well that worked on at Dale Velzi's, Dick Perry, he did the fiberglassing. And we started to make about a board or two a week. The very first boards I made we were just short of $100. Then I go back to hard work in the winter. A lot of the guys that I was making boards down in St. Clemente realized that I had moved up here. So they started coming up and nagging me about making some boards and it got too big for that building. The Castagnola brothers realized what I was doing and they agreed to build a building for me in one of their lots on Gray Avenue. I was deeply involved in making surfboards for Rincon. So I primarily wanted to really concentrate on that a lot. Eventually I came up with a design with the help of George Greeno, who greatly influenced my ideas, especially with fins on surfboards. So the combination of what he was doing and the ability to stand up surf really created the, the board which I called the spoon. I opened a little retail store down in uh, Summerland. Uh, one day after I came in fishing, I had this young girl, you know, over in the front room, helping the guys come in to buy surfboards. She told me that a couple of guys came in yesterday and bought four boards. And I said, would you ask them who they were or anything? No, they just came in and bought four surfboards. Well, that was kind of odd, you know, but I didn't really think any more about it. Finally, they started this movie. And all of a sudden, it occurred to me, where did they get those boards? Incoming! I think it was Milius that actually came and bought the boards. They took them down and did their own graphics on the boards and used those boards in the movie. Obviously, I thought, boy, this is going to cause some kind of a surge here. But it helped surfing overall. Not just me. Let's go with Mike, let him pick out a board for you, and bring me my Yater spoon, the 8.6. I don't know, sir. It's what a... is it, soldier? Well, I mean, it's pretty hairy in there. It, it's Charlie's point. Charlie, don't surf! Now, since I had to ride all these surfboards, exactly as you saw on the show here, I had to learn to surf on every single one of those boards, because that was the only thing available at the time I started. Then it occurred to me, we, we need somebody to actually do the painting of the places that the boards were ridden at that time. Well, I had already been interested in the history of surfing in California. So when Rennie and Kevin talked to me about this project, it was <clears throat> pretty much a shoe in because I'd already painted a lot of, at a lot of these places before. We get a hold of original photographs that were done and the places that all these boards were ridden to try to get the houses right, the piers, what kind of boards they were riding, what the background would look like, all of it. So basic format, composition, didn't change too much. This is actually the original planks that were written, oh, a lot in the 40s, late 40s. And he's, he's put the shell on here, where originally this is redwood, pine, redwood, pine, redwood, pine, all the way. This is simulating the balsa wood. He's done an absolutely marvelous job. This kind of balsa wood you cannot get today. It just isn't available. 
Anyway, he did this all this shell work, the better part of a whole week just putting this, these pieces of shell on here. I think this is really a, a masterpiece of our presentation here. So what does this project mean to you? It means a lot to me because I think it explains how surfing really started here in, in Southern California.